There is a Chinese idiom that describes people living in a troublesome situation, shui shen huo ru, which literally means to be trapped in deep water and hot weather at the same time. Sadly, it's no longer a descriptive term, but a reality in China. Since June, the southern part of China has had floods, while the northern part of China is experiencing extremely high temperatures. Family, I'm going to show you how to fry an egg in an iron wok. Today it's 42 degrees Celsius, 107.6 degrees Fahrenheit. I will lay the iron wok on the ground and let it sit under the sun for two hours. Then I will see if it can have eggs fried in it. Two hours later, this man poured a little oil into the wok and started frying the eggs. It's cooked, it's cooked, it's ready to eat. Not only did this man conduct the experiment during this period, but many other people in northern China have also done the same test and posted the results on Du Yin, the Chinese version of TikTok. Leave it here. Banan is on high heat. Let's see if we can cook the egg. You film this pan. In an hour, we'll pour the oil. Although the government claims the local temperature to be about 40 degrees Celsius, local residents say that the ground temperature has actually reached 68 degrees Celsius, or 154 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh my goodness, let's see how hot it is in Henan. <laughs> At around 1 p.m. on June 24th, the surface temperature in some cities in Henan province reached 74.1 degrees Celsius. Chinese media reported that one of the citizens in Jiaozhuo city threw an ant on the ground and it was roasted to death in less than three seconds. On June 25th, a number of Zhengzhou netizens posted videos of their glass doors bursting due to the high temperatures. The video shows these glass doors crawling with dense lines, shattering with the touch of a finger. Zhengzhou, the capital of Hunan province, is globally known for the tragic floods that submerged the tunnels in the summer of 2021. Online videos show that the roads in Hunan province are bulging and then later cracked due to high temperatures. Concrete pavement has seen many cracks as well. Chinese peasants are the ones who suffer the most, as their crops are desperately short of water during the peak summer growing season. In some areas, they have seen their corn seedlings turn into dead leaves and withered branches. This is our cornfield. People say it's been dry for so long. Why isn't it being watered? The problem is that the nearest water source is two kilometers away from us, so most of the time, we count on the weather and there is nothing we can do. On June 22nd, a woman from Henan province told overseas Chinese media,
都蒸鱼嘞。这这秋天是秋季是种不上树。Yet people are gathering under the sun in such high temperature weather in Hunan Province. A woman collapsed due to the high heat. Most of the crowd are from out of town who have deposited their money in the village banks in Hunan Province. Now the banks have closed their online banking and haven't opened services at the branches yet. Some customers see their deposit records erased, and more than 400,000 customers are at risk of losing their money. In the heat of over 50 degrees Celsius in Hunan, hundreds of victims protested in front of the Hunan Banking and Insurance Regulatory Bureau with determination. For the specific story, please check out our previous episode. As of June 26th, China's Central Weather Station has issued heat warnings for 13 consecutive days. As shown in the map, over 20 provinces and metropolitan areas out of 34 provinces across China will undergo the test of scorching heat. In this weather map, the four colors from light to dark represent hot to expand, hot to warp, hot to melt, and hot to evaporate. We see the purple color of steamy heat not only exists in the north and northwest of China, but has also spread to the south as well. Generally speaking, when the temperature is 32 degrees Celsius and the humidity is below 60 percent, it is a phase where the human body adapts to higher temperatures. When it reaches 35 degrees Celsius and the humidity is higher than 60 percent, it is the threshold for heat stroke to happen. China's central weather station reported that the recent high temperatures in some areas are record-breaking compared to the same period in other years. The highest temperature in some areas of Hebei Province, Shandong Province, and Hunan Province has reached more than 40 degrees Celsius. But the Chinese government appears to be keeping the temperature around 40 degrees Celsius. Given the Communist Party's habit of using altered data to notify the public, the actual temperature could be much higher. The persistently high temperatures are causing record high loads on the power grid in many places. The use of air conditioning has put pressure on power supplies. According to Chinese media, data on China's national power grid shows that grid loads in those provinces with high temperatures have reached new highs in late June. Last September, China experienced a nationwide power shortage, with many places pulling the plug and limiting power supply, mainly due to a shortage in power generation from coal-fired plants. The restrictions disrupted the production of energy-intensive enterprises and manufacturing industries, while making life inconvenient for the Chinese people. At that time, in order to relieve the pressure of power shortage, the Chinese government temporarily modified its policy to allow for increased coal consumption to ensure a normal power supply. So, will the high-temperature weather in 2022 lead to massive power cuts? The electricity authorities of several of the concerned cities are now saying that there won't be a repeat of 2021 or major power cuts. Still, it's hard to say what will happen. It has been proposed that workers should be given time off during high-temperature weather, called the high-temperature leave, and such leave will be limited to frontline workers and company employees whose offices are not air-conditioned. However, the Chinese government hasn't adopted it. So it's up to employers whether employees can take time off during high-temperature weather in China. Just as the actual flooding casualties in the South have been covered up, the Chinese Communist Party hasn't provided data on the number of illnesses and deaths caused by the high temperatures in the North. As usual, the official Chinese media has managed to find a so-called touching angle when reporting on the dire circumstances. In Shaoxing City, Zhejiang Province, the operators dressed in heavy insulated outfits, working continuously for several hours under high temperatures. When they returned to the ground, their overalls were already soaked through. The high temperatures and the severe droughts that occur every summer in China are getting worse every year. 
But it seems that Chinese officials have never taken them seriously. The recent repeated emphasis on food security by the CCP authorities has made people suspicious of a food crisis in China, which is now compounded by the flooding, high temperatures, and drought. In the case of the drought, the impact is mainly twofold. First, the drought has caused a significant reduction in winter wheat production, which has brought about potential food safety concerns and is expected to further increase food prices. Second, the resurgence of the outbreak in China, along with a series of economic crises caused by other factors, has caused tens of millions of rural workers to lose their jobs. These peasants are unable to find jobs upon returning to cities, and now they are faced with a drought in their hometowns, resulting in reduced food production and even a crop failure, aggravating their already difficult lives. Outside of China, many countries are also experiencing extreme weather, including high temperatures. It is just that in recent years, China seems to have had a particularly high volume of unusual weather.